Uh, Chad Myers, of course, in the CNN Weather Center, tracking Ian's path this morning, as Brianna mentioned, uh, upgraded there to the hurricane. What more do we know at this hour, Chad? We know it's going to be a very large major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Very few Floridians will have no impact at all. Even if you're in Miami, the water could be coming up into Biscayne Bay, even up into Miami itself because of the wind that's going to be onshore for so long. Right now it's a 75 mile per hour storm, but it's forecast to become a major category three making landfall in about 20 hours or so in western Cuba. And then it tries to parallel the Florida coast. And if you remember from last week, the models were just a mess. The GFS over here, the European over here. Well, now they have really come together in the middle. And that's what we would expect. As it gets closer, we will have a better idea of really which line is correct. Regardless, there's the GFS. Big storm out there. Here's the European, the latest here, still offshore, but very, very close. And even with a brushing blow, we could certainly see this storm surge up here into Tampa, five to eight feet. The irony is here, when the storm is south down here, wind may blow the water out of Tampa Bay. And then when the storm goes by, it'll blow it back in all the way down here to Port Charlotte, three to five, four to seven. Those are big storm surges and the waves with a storm that is going to be blowing at 140 miles per hour will be 25, 30 feet, and there's not much of a reef on the west coast of Florida. Those waves will be crashing on shore. A lot of rainfall too with this. Of course, it's a big event. Could be a foot of rain in places that aren't even near, near the center. So wow. a lot of things to go right, some things to go wrong. We'll keep watching it. We're still a couple of days away, but the prep day is today. Yeah, time to make those preparations. Chad, appreciate it. Thank you. Joining us now is Michael Brennan, Acting Deputy Director of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Thank you so much for being with us on this morning as we're watching Ian approach here. Give us a sense of where you are watching and when you are expecting landfall. Well, you can see Ian right now is located about 90 miles southwest of Grand Cayman with a intense thunderstorm activity developing near the center. We've seen the storm strengthen very rapidly since yesterday and reaching hurricane strength this morning. If we look at the forecast now, we're expecting Ian to turn from its northwestward motion, turn more northward and move nearer over the western tip of Cuba overnight tonight and into Tuesday morning. And then we're expecting a major hurricane to approach the west coast of Florida during the day Wednesday and into early Thursday. And for that reason now, we're highlighting this area here from Inglewood up to Ancloat River, including Tampa Bay, is now in a hurricane watch. We also have a storm surge watch in effect for the entire west coast of the Florida Peninsula, including the Florida Keys as well. So we're very concerned about those hazards, uh, life-threatening hazards developing as we go into uh, Wednesday and into Thursday in this region. Talk to us about the potential damage here, how strong this is expected to be, what people should be expecting. Well, we're looking at the potential for, uh, in terms of storm surge, inundation of up to five to eight feet above ground level in this region from Inglewood up to the Sarasota, Pinellas, Hillsborough counties, uh, Manatee County up into the Tampa Bay region. You know, that's life-threatening storm surge. It's, you know, I'm six feet tall, so that's potentially water you know, two feet above my head in some of these areas here. Four to seven feet of inundation in the Charlotte Harbor area, uh, three to five feet south of that. And then also the potential for uh, major hurricane force winds that can, uh, certainly do a lot of damage, but water and potentially storm surge is partic in particular is the hazard that has the potential to kill the most people in a hurricane, especially along the Florida West Coast. With that cone of uncertainty being with what it is, how should Floridians be preparing for this depending on where they live? Well, if you live in this storm surge watch area here that's highlighted in, pink, in this pink color, especially in this area, say from Cape Coral up to Tampa, today's the day to put your plan into action. You know, be on the lookout for any evacuation orders or other preparedness information that's going to come from your local officials today. Uh, you know, you basically have today and tomorrow to prepare and to evacuate if you're ordered to do so. Conditions are going to start to deteriorate as we go into late Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night and into Wednesday. Uh, there's also the potential for very heavy rain fall across much of the state of Florida, even inland and on the east coast. This area here in red from Orlando to Tampa Bay, the sort of central Florida area is most at risk of flooding rain over the next three days. Michael Brennan, we appreciate your time. We know that you are busy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, with Ian now forecast to meet major, major hurricane status tonight as it nears Cuba. People there understandably preparing as well. And that's where we find CNN's Patrick Ottman, who's live this morning in Havana. Patrick, good morning. 
Good morning to you. Yeah, people in this uh, area of Cuba, Western Cuba, are holding their breath to see if the storm hits uh, the western tip of Cuba or if it comes further east to more populated, populated areas like where I am in Havana. And so uh, the government is, of course, warning people to be be paying very close attention. Certainly people who live in low-lying coastal areas who will probably have to evacuate. Uh, of course, this storm is hitting a country that is already battered economically. So in, in terms of, you know, going to stock up or, or buy plywood, you know, those things are just not in the store. So, you know, if you live on an island, you really just kind of have to hunker down and wait for the storm to go by you. You know, all this summer, it's been a fairly quiet summer in terms of hurricanes. And I think people on both sides of the Florida Straits are, were hoping that we would get by without a hurricane hitting. Uh, that is not the case. Cuba is going to, one way or the other, one place or the other, uh, get absolutely hammered in uh, the next hours to come. And it just uh, remains to be seen whether it's a mostly rural area where the storm crosses over, which would do uh, less damage, uh, or if you have uh, flooding, buildings collapse in Havana, uh, which can happen even if there isn't a, a direct hit from a hurricane. So at this moment, the government here is just telling people to keep a very close eye on uh, what could be a potentially incredibly dangerous situation. Yeah, absolutely. We'll continue to check in with you, Patrick. Appreciate it. Thank you. Carlos, what is happening behind you there? Well, good morning, ladies. Uh, storm preparations across the city of Tampa are well underway. We are right now at one of three sandbag distribution sites that just got underway just a few minutes ago. And you can see just how many folks have already showed up here to try to fill up their sandbags. The line to get into this park goes all the way down the block and it stretches all the way to the other side. The city, in anticipation of Ian and the fact that we might be seeing some sort of impact from that storm, has been trying to tell folks that they need to finish their storm preps today. They want them to go ahead and take a look at their evacuation routes, and they want them to look at the flood zones, the flood maps. That's if they make a decision to go ahead and stay put. The last time that Tampa was hit directly by a hurricane was 1921, and officials are really concerned that if that storm makes its way here, we're going to see significant uh, storm surge associated with it. We're talking about anywhere between six to eight feet of a storm surge. You're going to have all of that water being pushed up along the coast and into the Tampa Bay area. The mayor of Tampa yesterday told us that a decision on an evacuation hasn't been made just yet, but she was expected to get a briefing this morning, and so we could be getting more information from her on that. Schools across Hillsborough County have been closed through at least Thursday, considering that a lot of their buildings will be used as storm shelters. So that is giving us an early indication that it does seem like this county is moving forward to at some point go ahead and issue some sort of evacuation order for residents that live in a pretty low-lying area. Ladies. So that storm surge that they're preparing for, I mean, what exactly might that look like when it comes to the businesses and the homes in that area? Well, to give you a sense of how things look at where we are right now, we're at a park that's surrounded by three bays, the old Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay, and then that third bay. And so what they're really worried about, especially the folks in Pinellas County, is that that storm surge is going to flood things no matter what. Even if that forecast track ends up having uh, Ian moving parallel to uh, Tampa Bay and the Tampa area, they still believe we're going to see a lot of that water making its way inland. And so they want folks to go ahead and come out and get these sandbags. The lines at these three locations were pretty long, and it's our understanding that they're going to continue to do this today, tomorrow, and most likely into Wednesday. However, emergency officials, again, have been telling folks, try to get this done early because we could start seeing some of these effects uh, starting uh, Tuesday. All right, very good advice to heed there. Carlos, thank you.